Ibn Ishaq, born in 704 and died in 767. Keen to preserve and protect the Quranic revelation and the prophetic tradition, the Hadith, the close companions of the Prophet Muhammad began to memorize and meticulously record the divine revelation and his sermons and exhortations for their own guidance and for the benefit of future generations. Some of the most prominent companions who recorded the Prophet's sayings and sermons during his own lifetime include Abdullah ibn Amir ibn al-As, Abdullah ibn Umair, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Anas ibn Malik, and Ali ibn Abi Talib. Following the death of the Prophet in 632, written information about his life and prophetic career began to proliferate. Renowned scholars like Muhammad ibn Muslim, Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri took it upon themselves to collect, edit and compile detailed accounts of the Prophet's life and times, and in so doing they meticulously preserved a large quantity of data about his life, the prophetic career and campaigns. As one of the foremost authorities on fiqh, jurisprudence, hadith, the prophetic tradition, Maghazi, the prophetic campaigns, and Sira, the Prophet's life, Al-Zuhri and his prominent disciples such as Musa ibn Uqba, Yaqub ibn Ibrahim, Muhammad ibn Saleh, and Abdurrahman ibn Abdulaziz played a pivotal role in compiling and preserving information about the life and times of the Prophet. One of Al-Zuhri's favourite students and arguably the most influential biographer of the Prophet was Ibn Ishaq. Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Ishaq ibn Yasir ibn al-Khiyar was born in Medina during the Khalif of Abu Bakr. His grandfather Yasir ibn Khayyar was captured by the great Muslim general Khalid ibn Walid during his campaign in the Iraqi province of Ain al-Tamr and sent to Medina. On his arrival, the Khalif handed him over to the Medinese tribe of Abdullah ibn Qais where he earned his living as a slave labourer. After he embraced Islam, Yasar was freed from bondage, but he continued to live and work with the people of Ibn Qais, having married the daughter of another former captive. Yasar's sons, Muhammad and Musa, thus grew up in Medina and became highly distinguished scholars of Hadith and Fiqh. Ibn Ishaq's early education began at home, under the supervision of his learned father who taught him the basics of Islam. Since Medina at the time was one of the most foremost centres of Islamic learning and education and where some of the Prophet's close companions continued to live, it was not necessary for young Ibn Ishaq to travel to other prominent centres like Makkah or Kufa to acquire higher education. After learning the Arabic language, grammar, the Quran and aspects of Hadith, he pursued advanced Islamic education and was fortunate to have met and acquired hadith from the famous companion Anas ibn Malik. Ibn Ishaq was not only a Tabi, a successor of the Prophet Muhammad. He also became a renowned scholar by virtue of his vast knowledge of hadith and the Prophet's campaigns. A contemporary of distinguished traditionists and scholars like Asim ibn Umar ibn Qatada, Musa ibn Uqba, Hashim ibn Urwa, Abdullah ibn Abu Bakr. Ibn Ishaq's thirst for knowledge of the Prophet's life and career earned him huge respect throughout Medina. His contribution in the field made him famous throughout the Muslim world. His devotion and dedication to his studies enabled him to learn a large quantity of prophetic traditions from the leading scholars of Medina while he was still in his early 20s. After completing his higher education, Ibn Ishaq left Medina for Egypt, where he studied Hadith under the guidance of a number of leading scholars of Hadith, including Yazid ibn Abu Habib. However, his mastery of Hadith was such that even Yazid was surprised by his expertise in the subject. And it is related that after he returned to Medina, Yazid began to narrate hadith on Ibn Ishaq's authority. Some of the prominent teachers of Ibn Ishaq include Asim ibn Umar ibn Qatada, 
and Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, both of whom were great scholars of the generation. In fact, al-Zuhri was considered to be the greatest scholar of Hadith and Sirah of his generation. Not surprisingly, his contribution to the field of Hadith and Sirah had profoundly influenced all the subsequent great scholars of these subjects. And since Ibn Ishaq's love for the prophetic traditions endeared him to al-Zuhri, the latter instructed his guard to allow Ibn Ishaq to come and see him whenever he wished. His gesture of goodwill did not, however, apply to any other scholars of his time. If any of those scholars wanted to see him, they were required to make an appointment in advance, and often they were made to wait outside al-Zuhri's house for a great man to come out and see him. In contrast, Ibn Ishaq had free access to him thanks to his love for and complete mastery of Hadith and Sirah, which earned him the respect of his teachers and contemporaries alike. Al-Zuhri rated him so highly that he once remarked that Medina would never become deprived of knowledge so long as Ibn Ishaq remained there. While still in his mid-thirties, his reputation spread beyond the borders of Medina. It was also during this period that a number of leading scholars of Medina, such as Malik ibn Anas and Hisham ibn Urwa, began to criticize Ibn Ishaq's idea and thoughts on the life of the Prophet. And some even began to question his credibility as a narrator of prophetic traditions. Like Ibn Ishaq, Malik was a great scholar of prophetic traditions. But rivalries and misunderstandings between the two men erupted due to differences in their approach to prophetic traditions, rather than out of personal enmity. The methodology pursued by Ibn Ishaq was, first and foremost, was that of a historian and biographer, while Malik was steeped in Islamic jurisprudence, as interpreted from the perspective of Medanese social ethos, urf, and cultural practices, Amal. The intellectual differences between the two men revolved around the question of what actually constituted an authentic prophetic tradition. According to Malik, Ibn Ishaq's methodology of ascertaining certain aspects of Hadith literature was not as rigorous as it ought to be, but the latter fiercely disagreed with him, and this led to considerable intellectual rivalry and accusations of bad faith on both sides. The main reason why Malik and others questioned Ibn Ishaq's reliability as a Hadith narrator was largely due to the fact that he had obtained information about the prophetic campaigns, including that of the Battle of Khaybar, from both Jewish and Christian converts to Islam, rather than for any other reason. Malik was of the opinion that these converts were not reliable narrators and, as such, he refused to accept Ibn Ishaq's information about the Prophet's campaigns. That aside, Malik had no problem in accepting Ibn Ishaq as an authentic and credible narrator of Hadith. But unlike Malik, Ibn Ishaq considered these converts to be reliable sources of information about the Prophet's campaigns. He claimed to have examined their narrations with great care and found their information reliable, insofar as Khaybar and the Prophet's other campaigns were concerned. Unable to reconcile his difference with Malik, Ibn Ishaq was eventually forced to leave Medina and move to Egypt. Notwithstanding Malik's reservations about Ibn Ishaq's reliability as a narrator of the Prophet's campaigns, other great scholars of Hadith and Maghazi include Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, al-Shu'ayb, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, al-Shafi, Yahya ibn Ma'in, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari, and ibn Hisham, considered ibn Ishaq to be a very trustworthy and reliable scholar. Ibn Ishaq's scrupulousness as a narrator of prophetic traditions is most evident from the fact that his entire biography of the Prophet is punctuated with phrases such as God knows best and may God protect me from attributing to the Prophet words he did not utter, especially when describing events which appeared to be contradictory and where he was unable to ascertain their veracity. 
rightly considered to be one of the greatest scholars of Hadith, Maghazi and Sira, by the leading scholars of his day. Ibn Ishaq became an indefatigable collector of prophetic traditions. Indeed, he conducted a systematic study of this subject and constantly refined his methodology for analysing and ascertaining relevant information and data, before passing them on to his students and contemporaries, who lavished much praise on Ibn Ishaq for his vast contribution to the development of Sira literature. Ibn Ishaq stayed in Egypt for a short period before moving to Kufa, where he settled down and began to teach Hadith, Maghazi and Sira. His lectures were attended by large numbers of students, including some of the leading scholars of Kufa. Some of his prominent students include the distinguished Islamic scholars like Ali ibn Mujahid, Yunus ibn Bukhair, Salama ibn al-Fadl, and Ziyad ibn Abdullah ibn Tufail al bakhai These eminent scholars learned Hadith, Maghazi and Sira directly from Ibn Ishaq and became reliable, trustworthy and renowned scholars of their own right. Ibn Ishaq lived at a very exciting period in Islamic intellectual history. There was so much interest in Sira of the Prophet that virtually all the renowned scholars of the time authored a book and treatise on the subject. Thus highly respected scholars like Al-Zuhri, Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Nawfal, Musa ibn Uqba and Wahab ibn Munabbi had written books on the life and campaigns of the Prophet. However, it was Ibn Ishaq's voluminous biography of the Prophet which represented the very first systematic and substantial study of the life and career of the Prophet. As such, his book was a pioneering work on the subject of Sirah and continues to exert a powerful influence to this day. Based on his lectures of the Prophet Sira, Ibn Ishaq's Kitab Sira Rasulullah, the biography of God's Messenger, provides a detailed exposition of the Prophet's life and times, focusing especially on his campaigns. Divided into three sections, the first part of the book began with the story of creation, tracing the genealogy of the Prophet from Adam to Abraham, and then from Abraham to the Prophet himself through Ishmael. The second part of the book narrates the Prophet's birth, early life and his mission. He devoted the third part of his book to the Prophet's campaigns. Ibn Ishaq completed his monumental biography of the Prophet during his stay in Kufa and Rai, before he eventually settled in Baghdad at the behest of the Abbasid Khalif Abu Jafar al-Mansur. After he completed his biography of the Prophet, his prominent student, such as Yunus ibn Bukhair, Salama ibn al-Fadl, and Ziyad ibn Abdullah ibn Tufail al bakhai made copies for themselves. It is claimed by the historians that Ibn al-Athir's main source of information on the life and career of the Prophet came from Yunus ibn Bukhair's copy of Ibn Ishaq's original manuscript. It is also true that Al-Tabari, the celebrated Quranic commentator and historian, obtained his information on the life and times of the Prophet from a copy made by Salama ibn al-Fadl during Ibn Ishaq's stay in Rai. In the same way, the distinguished traditionist and historian Abu Muhammad Abdul Malik ibn Hashim ibn Himyari obtained his copy of Ibn Ishaq's biography of the Prophet through the latter's student al bakhai who made two copies of the biography for himself. Ibn Isham was an extremely reliable historian, an expert in Arabic literature and prominent scholar of Hadith, who not only studied and analysed Ibn Ishaq's voluminous biography of the Prophet, but also completely reviewed and re-edited the entire book and published it under the title of Al-Sirat Al-Nabawiyya although later would be popularly known as Sirat Ibn Hisham or Ibn Hisham's biography of the Prophet. This book was destined to become the most famous and influential biography of the Prophet ever written and virtually all the other biographers of the Prophet used it as a standard reference on the subject. 
Ibn Ishaq's contribution to the field of Sira was, therefore, unique and unprecedented. His monumental biography of the Prophet rightly earned him universal acclaim and all the great historians of Islam, commentators of the Quran, scholars of Hadith and Sira, including Ibn al qutayba Al-Baladuri, Al-Tabari, Ibn Saad, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Ibn al-Athir, Abdurrahman al-Suhaili, Ibn Kathir, al-Suyuti, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, and Ibn Sayyid al-Nas drew information about the life and career of the Prophet from Ibn Ishaq's magnum opus. Without Ibn Ishaq's monumental biography, our knowledge and understanding of the seerah of the Prophet would certainly have been much poorer than it is today. After completing the biography of the Prophet, Ibn Ishaq presented a copy to the Abbasid Khalif, Abu Jafar al-Mansur, who reportedly rewarded him handsomely for his efforts. Muhammad ibn Ishaq died and was buried in the cemetery of Khaizuran in Baghdad, the capital of the Abbasid dynasty at the age of 63.